So in this next little tutorial from iPhotography, we're going to show you how to create what we call a stretch effect. This will modernize some really cool action shots, and make them look a little bit more eye-catching. So let's just jump into it. So this is the photograph that we've chosen to work with. It's really clean and simple background, great little bit of energy and a bit of action. Now it may take you a little bit of time just to set this shot up to begin with before we actually start adding the stretch effect because it ultimately depends upon how busy uh, and how um, difficult it is to separate your subject from the background because that's what we need to do. We need to cut this person out from the background so we don't have that background at all. So it may take you a little bit of time to do depending upon how busy it is, I say. Um, now now, there's a couple of different ways that you can remove backgrounds. You can either um, basically use things like the Magic Erase tool and just take out the background. You can use the Magic Wand tool, as I prefer. In this instance, with this background, because it's pretty plain and, uh, and pretty simple, um, using the Magic Wand tool, I think, will probably be one of the most efficient ways. But you could also use the Pen tool and draw an outline to your subject there and the skateboard and then erase it that way. Um, lots of different ways to do it, ultimately. But all I'm going to do is using the magic wand tool, our tolerance set to around about 15, but again, that's always dependent upon the image that you're using and how clean the background is. Just make several selections just by using the shift key. You can add multiple selections. I'm just going to go in a little bit closer. Just make sure all the areas of the background that I want selected. And then what I'm going to do is using our layers tool on the right hand side is just click the background, the little padlock on the background layer there, just so it's editable. And then if we just press Control and X, or this will be Command and X on a Mac keyboard, and that just gets rid of our background. So we've just got a really nice, simple version of our image now, uh, cut out from the back with no other distractions. Now what we need to do next is what we call creating a single line selection. Now you can make selections using things like the marquee tool, but they're not necessarily always that narrow. And it's very, very hard to make a single line. A single line would normally be about a pixel, maybe two pixels, but there is an option within it. And it's not hidden up with a marquee tool as you may expect. So we need to go down to the board to the bottom of our vertical toolbar and have a look here. Now we've got an option of a single column or a single row. Either way, they're both the same, whether it's vertical or horizontal. So I'm going to use a single row selection here. So now what we need to try and do is position and draw this row where there's the most amount of colors that are used within our image. Now there is some nice kind of pinks down the bottom here, but it would be very hard because it nothing, none of it really lines up exactly with our subject. And it's very hard to actually draw these things diagonally. But there is a nice variation of grays, so light grays, dark grays, along with the skin tones. So I'm thinking maybe if we draw a line across our subject here, around about where his uh, top of his chest is. So you can actually see if you just press on screen, you can see where the line's going to fall. And so now it's down to us basically to try and kind of create that uh, or kind of capture as much color, many different colors in that line selection as possible. Now what we need to do is basically make a copy of what we've selected here. So we're going to go up to edit and copy. And now we need to create a new layer to actually paste that information on. So we're going to go to layer, new layer, and we'll call this stretch. And now we're going to return and we're going to go edit and paste. Okay, so it's super thin at the minute. It's really so narrow that we pretty much can't see it with our eyes. This is where the magic starts to happen next. So what we need to do is transform that information so it's more visible. So we're going to go to edit, free transform. And there it is. You can see if we're just going to drag it out holding the shift key. We can see all the colors that we've created in that single line selection there. So we're going to drag it out just so it covers most of our subject there. We can still re rearrange it. There we go. And once we press enter, we see all the colors. So this is why it's important to make that good single line selection. So we've got those colors that cross over from his hair and there was bits on his jacket where it's a bit lighter and it's a bit darker. So that's the main basis of what we're going to use to create our stretch. Now what we need to do with our stretch is actually make it more circular. So to do that, we're going to go up to filter so we're going to go up to filter and then we'll come back a bit further to distort and then to the submenu of polar coordinates. And it's going to give us this little uh, window here where we've got the options of rectangular to polar or polar to rectangular. And basically you just need to choose the one obviously that's going to create that circular effect for you. 
which our first one does quite nicely. So you can see the idea of what it's going to create. So we press OK. There we go. OK, so you can see the idea that's made here. Now, obviously, you see the problem that we've got is that it's actually in front of our subject where we want to have it behind. But that's really easy to do. You can just kind of select that top layer and just drag it underneath. Now, again, you can see that there's actually parts that are opened and there's gaps and it's not a fully complete circle. That's not necessarily a bad thing either, because what works well with the stretch is that it looks like it's running from one part of the body to another. In this instance, I'm going to actually have it. So we're going to position it. And now you can also then return to your free transform tool. But by holding down the control key, you can then pull the circle around a little bit just so we catch it. So it crosses over the edge of our fingers of our subject here. Same on the opposite side. I'm going to raise it a little bit higher just so that void that we had is hidden. Just so the space behind is quite clear. Now let's go in a little bit closer. So you can see we've got areas that are just behind the hands and it stops fully behind the head. Not a major issue. We can just use a layer mask and we'll get rid of those really, really easily using a black brush. We can make it that little bit neater and we can just erase and you can start to see the more three dimensional effect come in here. So this is why it's important to position this stretch effect behind two areas makes it look a little, a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more three dimensional. Now it makes him look like he's got wings to go behind it as well. Now, because we cut out our subject a little bit earlier from the background, uh, obviously we don't have any background to it, but you can still go back and put that in there just by creating a new layer. What could be quite nice and effective is that a little bit earlier, I had actually chosen some of the colors that were from our original background and we still have them on our swatches. If you do have that brilliant, you can use that. If not, you can pick out colors that are actually in the stretch effect, but I'm going to go back and use the original colors that we had before. Go to the gradient tool. And because I've got two colors set on my swatches, my gradient up here is using them to create a really nice gradient. And then I can add that in just by drawing a line straight down the middle of the document. I can make it more angular if I wanted to. It just really depends where I prefer to put the uh, the line. I can do it top to bottom, bottom to top. I think I will have it from top to bottom there. Brilliant. There we go. So we've created a really, really innovative stretch effect. You can take things a little bit further. You can start to add drop shadows to these aspects as well if you wanted to. But it was just a really unique way of being able to add a little bit more drama and a little bit more action to some really cool sports shots. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, keep watching out for iPhotography for more. Thanks for watching.